Hey, so hello everybody. Welcome to this episode of Design Time. Uh, Dawn and Carolyn here, and today we're going to talk about inline grading on Blackboard. Uh, so let me start by um, hopefully you can see our um, our demonstration course here, and I've pulled up a module page. So uh, the first thing you need to understand about inline grading is that you must use the assignment tool in Blackboard for it to work. So um, if you're one of these people who um, either collects uh, paper in your face-to-face -face classroom or maybe if you're teaching online or a hybrid class and you're having your students email assignments to you, it's much, much easier to use the assignment tool in Blackboard. And we're not going to go through all the elements of the assignment tool today, but just so you know, when you build an assignment in Blackboard, uh, what you do essentially, and that's what I have here on the screen, is you're creating a link. And if students click on that link, they're taken to a page like this where they can um, either enter an answer in the, in the um, well, not actually, they would have to put it here. I always forget to do that. They could write their submission. Uh, they can add comments. And what's more common is um, generally uh, instructors have students uh, attach an assignment, a Word document. And for what we're going to show you today, that is what you would actually want students to do. You would want them to attach a document, a file, um, and then you would be able to grade it right from within Blackboard. This, this is the really cool part of what we're going to show you today. But we did want to make the point uh, pretty clearly that you have to build an assignment link in Blackboard for this to work. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Dawn, and she's going to talk a little bit about how to um, how to begin grading. So let me. Right. So what we're going to do is, assuming you've used the assignment tool and your students have submitted either a Word document, a PowerPoint document, or a PDF document, those are the three formats that are accepted in the assignment link and also the inline grading. Um, tool. So assuming they have a, attached that as their assignment and sent it off to you, the way you, uh, you go to get to that assignment and get to the inline grading, there's two different ways. Under your control panel, under the grade center, there's a needs grading option and there's also the full grade center. And needs grading will take you to everything that needs to be graded. I will put in a caveat here that if you are in an online program and you are using groups, so you have a large number of students in your, in your class and you're using smart views to organize the grade center and keep it to just your group, the needs grading does not organize by smart view. So it will give you the whole giant class. So that might not be the best way for you to go. However, if you're not in that situation, needs grading will bring everything to the forefront of your class that needs to be graded. So that's kind of nifty. The yeah, other I, I, would just, I would just add one, one thing, because I like to use needs grading myself, because I like to grade things in the order that they came in. Yes. So first submitted, first graded, and it puts things in that order. You can, you can, you can sort them by that order using the date submitted. So sorry, to, I just wanted to put that in. No, good point. So the other way to get to um, your grades that have been submitted or your assignments have been submitted is through the full grade center. So you'll click on the full grade center and here you're probably familiar with this. You'll see all of your students, all of the columns that have an assignment and then your submissions. And so what we're going to do to get to inline grading is go to Carolyn Stoll's um, yellow exclamation point that tells you there is something ready to be graded. She's going to click the down arrow and click on the attempt. So that is Carolyn's attempt at submitting an assignment. So it's kind of a funny phrase, but um, we're going to look at this attempt. So what happens here is you come to this screen, and this is called inline grading because you can grade within Blackboard. It is a tool called Crocodoc. Don't know why, just is. Um, and there are options here. And what's really nice is previously you may have been in a situation where you're downloading great or downloading Word documents, using track changes, re-uploading Word documents to get the information back to your students, and it was a process. What this allows you to do is see the document, and let's run through the tools at the top of the page here. 
Um, and actually, let me let me pause for just a second. <coughs> Let's see what we're looking at here. On the left, you see the document that they've submitted. And on the far right, this is where you're going to enter in the grade information. But there's this little arrow here that Carolyn's um, pointing at that you have to click on to get the full extension. That is not intuitive, and a lot of people miss it. So we wanted to be sure, click that down arrow, because that's your opportunity to provide feedback to your students, and that's where they're going to see that feedback. Along with, if you're using rubrics, your rubric would be here as well. We're not going to go into rubrics. That's another design time. However, this is where that would show up so you can provide feedback within a rubric as well. So now that we've gotten this all laid out, let's go back to the top and so we can go through the tools here. You have a Zoom tool. You can make it smaller. You can make it bigger. That is your preference. And then the most important one really is this comment. So the comment gives you a lot of options here. So it's very similar to track changes in that you can highlight something and make a comment. You can draw, so you can comment here. You can draw. Um, I don't use this as often because it's not very precise, but you can absolutely circle something and then comment about it. You can highlight a particular area that you want to obviously highlight, and you've got color choices, so that's always fun. Um, you can put a text box in, or write in text, excuse me, that lets you write in text, so if you're trying to correct something, you can write in text on the actual document. And you can also strike out, so if you see a sentence that was not supposed to be there, you can highlight a sentence and um, strike it out. There you go. And you can always use different colors. The middle column between the document and where you put the grade is keeping a list of all of the track changes that are comments or annotations, they like to call it, that you've made. So you have a history of all of those. And so that is essentially how to use the Crocodoc inline grading. And Carolyn is going to um, talk a little bit more about entering the grade and so forth. And I believe she's going to hit on this, but I'd like to just comment here quickly that everything that you put in here is seen and saved, is saved and seen by the student. And you have an option to download it, um, which is here. If you want to keep the file on your computer with the annotations, you can do that. I believe students also have that option to download the annotated file as well. So, but it is all saved in Blackboard, so it's not necessary to download it, but it is an option for you. But everything is captured here. So I'm going to hand it over to Carolyn. She's going to talk about what do you do next now that you've gotten the annotations there. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so once you've made your markup, um, and let me just say, I was a writing teacher for a long time. I would have killed to have had this tool yeah. um, because what I had to do was, as Don described earlier, download, make comments, and I did it on, on, on a computer, so I used words markup features, but, but then I had to re-upload it. It was a pain. This would have been so much simpler. Uh, but once you've made your markups and your, your comments and your annotations, then um, all that's left to do is really to, uh, you can provide sort of summative feedback over here, uh, just sort of tie all the loose ends together. And just so you know, you can, you can type in this uh, little box here, or you can open a full text box editor and have all the, all the formatting options that are available in the text box editor anywhere in Blackboard, including, and this is the coolest part, if you want to record a video feedback for your um, for your feedback to the students, you could even get really wild and crazy and record a video of you marking up the the, the document. And again, if you're a writing teacher um, or trying to teach writing, this could be really really useful because it's it's helpful for students to see you actually reading and responding to their paper. So so. So you could put your feedback in here, just provide feedback to your student, 
And then really all that's left after that is to enter a grade. Um, I'm just going to give an 8 because I never give a 10. And then the important part is to remember to hit submit. You can, if you plan to come back, let's say maybe you don't get finished or maybe you uh, got interrupted or you, you have, um, you know, maybe the assignment wasn't complete, you want to talk to the student before you finish grading, something like that. You can save it as a draft and then come back later and complete it. Uh, or, of course, you can cancel, but that will lose everything you've done. So if you're finished grading, you want to go ahead and click Submit, and Blackboard will give you um, a grade submitted. Now, normally what it would do is it would have the green submission confirmation bar up at the top, but then it would also move you to the next student. We only had one student who needed grading, so it just dumped us back to the grade center. But that's the other nice feature of this is that you can just move through student after student after student, um, so it really streamlines the whole grading process and speeds things up. And again, if you've got a lot of written work in your course, you know how, um, how much time it takes to grade that sort of work. And um, you know those kinds of assessments are very valuable because they allow you to assess higher order thinking skills that are a little more difficult to assess in a multiple choice test. Um, so you want to be able to make these assignments, but you also want to make it so it's not such a, such a chore to grade. So this inline grading really goes a long ways toward doing that. So, um, so that's pretty much the whole, the whole thing about inline grading. Dawn, are we forgetting anything? Or? I think that's everything we had on our agenda. Um, we did want to throw out to everybody, um, if you have open questions, and obviously there's no one here today, um, but you can always email us at CETUS Health and ask us any open questions, or if you're trying this out and something goes awry, you know, you always know to contact us. And then our next design time is going to be, again, the first Wednesday of every month, so we're looking at May 4th. And next month we're going to talk about learning objects. Um, you may or may not have heard of them, but it's something that we've been doing a lot more of in the last year. And these are interactive objects that we can work with you to design within your course and upload them to your course. So we're going to do a little showcase of learning objects, the kinds that you can create, the um, impact it has on students and engagement, and get you a little excited about maybe wanting to come in and work with us to get one of those designed for your class. So that's what we're going to talk about next month. Um, we also wanted to mention we are going to continue design time through the summer. So even though a lot of you aren't here, we'll still keep talking at you um, and keep putting them up on our YouTube site and making them available to everybody. So you all know you've got a 10 to 15 minute um, quick tip out there that you can use in your, in your teaching and grading and um, we hope it helps you. So that's it. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.